Hello everyone, Richard here, and welcome to episode 16 in my Payday 2 Weapon Guide. Today, we're going to be looking at the minigun's little brother, comically known as the Microgun. Sharing a similar design to the M134 minigun in principle, the Microgun chambers the smaller 5.56 by 45mm NATO round. This allows it to have an overall smaller and lighter design construction. The in-game weapon is based on the XM556, developed by Empty Shell as a relatively man-portable alternative to the M134. In-game, the microgun is essentially a side grade of the minigun, however it does unrealistically possess increased damage, coming in at a default of 35. This increased stopping power will significantly cut down on the shots required to kill, compared to the Vulcan. And this is especially true if you manage to land a few lucky headshots. However, this increased damage does come at the cost of a reduced cycling rate, likely due to a smaller motor firing only at a pathetic 2000 rounds per minute, a full 1000 rounds slower than the Vulcan. And this in turn does give the Vulcan a higher DPS with the microgun coming in at 1167 damage per second, compared to 1250 for the Vulcan. The microgun, despite its blistering fire rate and low stability, still remains relatively controllable during full auto fire. However, firing shots and burst is recommended to ensure your aim does not get carried off target. Accuracy is in a similar vein. While by no means acceptable for any other weapon other than the minigun, it is still capable of producing a fairly tight wall of lead at close and even medium ranges. Default magazine size comes in at 750 rounds, more than plenty to annihilate dozens of helpless enemies. Do keep in mind that unlike other automatic weapons, you will need to invest considerable amounts of ammo into each enemy you encounter, so it is best to line up several so that any missed rounds may strike another enemy. Unfortunately, when this weapon does need to be reloaded, it will take nearly 8 seconds to complete without any other skills to improve this. So either invest in Bloodthirst or Lock and Load, or be ready to find cover to safely reload this weapon. The microgun can be reload cancelled as well, so be sure to be tapping the fire key as you reload in order to save a little bit extra time. Total ammo will mimic the magazine size at 750 rounds, meaning additional ammo will have to either be scavenged from dead enemies or via ammo bags. Thankfully, the microgun does have a very generous pickup rate ranging from 10 to 35 with walk-in closet, and a staggering 13 to 45 with fully loaded ace. As long as you're keen on picking up ammo, you shouldn't need to worry about using ammo bags. For our build with the microgun, we will be focusing on increasing accuracy as much as possible, allowing for a much more consistent experience, especially when it comes to time to kill. Our boost we will select is the accuracy boost, followed by the LED combo and then the heat sink barrel, netting us a 33% increase in accuracy points. For our skill selection, I would highly recommend Bloodthirst or Lock and Load, if not both, as they will dramatically improve your reload speeds. Fully Loaded Aced can also give you extra ammo and extra ammo pickup, almost guaranteeing you will never be hungry for ammo. Surefire Ace and Body Expertise Ace will also dramatically improve lethality, giving increased damage to body shots and allowing you to penetrate the armor of heavy SWAT units. The perk deck I recommend would be Muscle, as the ability to make enemies panic from firing weapons synergizes very well with the minigun's high fire rate and decent threat level. This can easily allow you to reduce incoming fire just with the pull of a trigger. Also, it is highly advised to take a powerful melee weapon, such as a katana, if you use Bloodthirst to help ensure quick melee kills to obtain quicker reloads. Overall, the microgun offers an interesting side grade to the minigun without the need for the overkill pack. It's able to keep dozens of enemies at bay just with the mere sound of its report. What it has in raw power, it lacks in finesse, and its low precision, clunky handling, and painful reloads make it a chore to operate in hectic and very open environments. Thank you very much for watching. Join us next time when we dive into some of the more powerful akimbo weapons. But until then, happy hunting.